more of a first lieutenant, but regardless, filling in for Steve Malsberg today. Joe Concha, thanks for being here, everybody. Newsmax TV, Newsmax Radio, and now we're here for the big interview, which was with Sarah Palin. This was earlier in the week. We were down at HarperCollins here in New York City. And just before we, we toss to this, we talk about a whole range of political items, and, and we talked about her book as well in a separate interview that you can see on Newsmax.com. But, you know, I think if Governor Palin had the chance to do this over again, she probably wouldn't launch this book the same week that Chris Christie won a 22-point victory in New Jersey, in the blue state, in being now coordinated in certain circles as the Republican nominee in 2016. Because all she had to do while she was going from interview to interview, whether it be Jake Tapper with CNN, whether it be Matt Lauer with NBC, whether it would be me with Newsmax, the first question everybody wanted to know was, wow, what do you think of Chris Christie? Not exactly a favorite of the Tea Party, even though that always baffled me because, wow, he cuts taxes and he's balancing budgets and he's busting unions and he's a tough-talking maverick. He's kind of like Palin in many ways, but for whatever reason, conservatives have not embraced Christie, mainly for the cultural aspects and because he's a Northeast Republican and maybe they don't want another Romney. So regardless, the governor was forced to answer a couple of questions from me about Chris Christie, about John Boehner, about a whole slew of topics. Sarah Palin, Joe Concha, Harper Collins, earlier in the week. Let's roll the tape. I want to talk about politics for a moment. Yeah. A lot going on, obviously, November. Uh, we're in an off election year, but there were two big elections last week. Um, one election was in my home state of New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, Chris Christie, yeah. uh, he's a tax cutting, union busting, budget balancing, tough talking maverick. Kind of sounds familiar. <laughs> Those sound like the traits of your typical Tea Party candidate, yet he's not the number one choice of Sarah Palin in 2016. Why is that? Well, first, hey, a Republican governor in a blue state, right on, a BC alternative. Uh, you know, I'm happy for New Jersey to have a Republican governor because hopefully the Republican governor will understand that uh, we need to make government, all levels, especially the federal government, as irrelevant in our lives as possible and empower the people to make decisions for themselves and spend their income the way that they desire and manage their health care the way that they desire. Um, I, but conservatives don't accept him. Well, the. the Conservatives accept the the budget busting agenda of of any any politician, you know, in, in order to make government live within its means. Um, but as for and I, you know, I think maybe what the suggested question here is, how would he do in a presidential race? How would he do nationwide? That remains to be seen uh, because so many Americans, uh, me included, me being a proud participant in that grassroots movement that is referred to as the Tea Party. Um, we are, are tired of politicians kind of vacillating on some very fundamental issues, um, say uh, amnesty for one, let's, let's talk one specific issue. Uh, when we are a pro-immigration nation, we want people to come in recognizing how exceptional America is. We want them to work hard for the awesome benefits and blessings of America, but we want right out of the chute them not to break our law because we are, uh, you know, governed So it's more on cultural issues where you may have some differences with, with Governor Christie, well, uh, gay marriage or, or immigration. I just reasons. absolutely want to make sure that the next GOP candidate can so excite and encourage and empower the American people that we want to get out there and vote for that person and for their message and for their agenda instead of just voting against the status, big government, socialized policies that no doubt the far left Democrat will be representing. Mm -hmm. I want, we want something to, to vote for, not just against. Gotcha. You said about Governor Christie in August uh, that he's for big government. Uh, and trying to go along just to get along. Too often, that is what we see, and, and not just necessarily uh, Chris Christie, but so many politicians think that this is a time to uh, compromise with the left, take Obamacare. Uh, politicians ran on the idea of replacing Obamacare with something that's market centered, patient centered, something that allows competition in the marketplace of health care coverage. And yet, when it came time to stand up and defund it, which is the legislative tool that uh, Congress holds to get rid of a policy that is absolute a train wreck for this country, too many politicians 
waved the white flag instead and didn't stand with senators like Ted Cruz and Mike Lee, who were fulfilling their campaign promise to do all that they could to defund, to replace Obamacare. So, so that's a disappointment. Okay, so the government was partially shut down. You called it a slim down. Slim down. Oh, yeah, what, 16 days of 17% of the government kind of uh, turning down the volume of its expenditures and, and its activities? That was not a shutdown. But there were political ramifications, particularly in Virginia, with yeah. Cuccinelli. You had all those government workers in Northern Virginia that pushed Terry McAuliffe over the finish line. It was a very close race. If there was no government shutdown, some argue that Cuccinelli probably wins. Well, then that it's race. too bad that the mainstream media put the blame on the Republicans for this quasi shutdown. Harry Reid, Barack Obama, they had opportunity to keep things open. We have billions of dollars coming into the federal government every day that could fund the essential services and pay service on our debt. Uh, there was no need to shut anything down. And Harry Reid led the shutdown, and yet the lamestream media put the blame on the Republicans. And I think Republicans didn't fight hard enough to get that message out that, hey, it wasn't our choice to shut things down. They were the ones, the political party in power, they're the ones who decided to do it. So if you were in a position of power and you were running the Republican Party, would you do it again if given the opportunity, go with that strategy? Uh, I would go with that strategy with better messaging. The messaging being, we're not going to throw the good guys under the bus. We're not going to throw Mike Lee, Ted Cruz, Rand Paul under the bus mm -hmm. and send this message to Americans that it's okay, A, not to hold your politicians accountable for what they ran on, and B, that it's okay for politicians to tell us one thing in a campaign and turn right around and do the opposite. That's not cool. And I'm talking both sides of the aisle on this, too. Certainly don't want to be seen as just slamming the Republicans because the bigger problem is the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party being led by far leftists who want to shove down our throats these socialist ideas of, of health care that takes over one-sixth of our economy and um, regulations that are going to shut down business and industry and energy developments that will make us more and more of a bankrupt and beholden to other nations country. America deserves better than that. Given the rollout of Obamacare and how disastrous it's been, and, and Democrats and Republicans pretty much agree on that. Yeah. We're six weeks in now. Higher deductibles, higher premiums, people losing their plans, losing doctors that they're comfortable with. Are you surprised that Kathleen Sebelius still has a job? I am surprised. Uh, you know, having been a boss, having an administration under me and, and in the private sector too, no, I, I would replace a person that has so screwed up a rollout. But you know, the, the, the rollout itself, the screw up, the broken website that now Barack Obama says, oh, we're going to bring in the best and the brightest now to fix this website. I don't give a flying flip about a malfunctioning website, the, the website fixer-uppers that are going to come in. These best and brightest, supposedly they've been calling the shots for a long time, and what, is it, what do they have to show for it? No, a broken website is the least of our worries. The greater worry is what Obamacare is all about, and an even greater worry than that is Obamacare being a symptom of this agenda that is stifling, it's, it's strangling our economy, and it's um, a, a big, growing, burdensome government that would want to take over too much of a free market and a free people. Interesting. Let me just get back to Governor Christie for one more question sure. on that. You've said in the past that you would support a third party candidate. If Governor Christie got the 2016 Republican nomination, are you still open to that idea? It depends on who else is out there at the time. I, you know, I'm not so anti Chris Christie that I certainly, it's not like I wouldn't give him a chance to. Uh, make sure that it, what it is that he stands for and his record would have to reflect uh, this recognition that America is going bankrupt and we can't rely on the federal government to continue to um, bail out businesses and, and communities and um, uh, that then making our freedoms fade and making our free market be stifled, I, want, I would want to make sure that any candidate, not just Chris Christie, understands the import of empowering the people, individuals, our own businesses, our own families to make decisions for ourselves, not big government. Using a grading scale, A to F, how would you rate John Boehner's performance as speaker to this point? Oh, that's a 
tough question to answer because you know I'm not on the inside and and I don't necessarily well, just as an observer ever want to be on the inside of how that machine works. Uh, I think it's a both sides of the aisle. You know, it's kind of a malfunctioning machine. Um, so really tough to put a letter grade on it. But um, uh, you know, I I respect the fact that he's a Republican and he's he's. Uh, kind of like this hockey goalie who's trying to deflect as many pucks of President Obama as possible, and I appreciate that aspect of him. You endured a lot of slings and arrows, obviously, as a vice presidential candidate, and even since, uh, particularly from left media. What if one of your kids came to you and said, Mom, I want to run for public office? Would you think it's a good idea, given how polarized now nasty things are out there? I would think it's a great idea, because I know that my kids have a strong foundation of uh, faith in America, the American people, they they so respect uh, the freedom that we have here in America and because my kids have been through so much not just on a political level but on a personal level you know with their biggest brother serving in war zones, their littlest brother uh, who has some special needs and will face more challenges than most any of us ever will. Uh, our, our family having gone through so much I think my children would be well equipped to have a servant's heart which is exactly what we need in America in, in, in terms of politics. Final question. We talked a lot about your book today. What's the next chapter in Sarah Palin's life? We hear about a Senate run, possibly in Alaska. Mm -hmm. You're obviously re-signed with Fox. What's next for Sarah Palin? Well, I, I don't have the crystal ball, of course, to know politically what will happen, but I certainly enjoy what I'm doing now, and that is trying to empower the American public to remind them that they have a voice, that if they stiffen their spines and stand for what they believe in, they'll see that other spines around them are stiffened too. And that we then together uh, can put this country back on the right course. We don't have to be a country that is bankrupt, that has this miserable economy and that, and that has freedoms being eroded out from under built America and integrity and the time-tested truths of following the Constitution to defend our republic I want to empower people to know that they can do it. Well, you certainly seem to be enjoying this aspect of I your do. life, and we appreciate you joining us. Thank you, Governor. Thank you so much. Good appreciate luck. you. Thanks. The book is Good Tidings and Great Joy, Protecting the Heart of Christmas. Again, if you want to see our conversation about the book, about angry atheists who are apparently uh, very dangerous people in this country, at least the ones that have lawyers anyway, and threatening the... Uh, the heart of Christmas, as, as Ms. Palin described it, and just to give you a little preview, basically, uh, she takes on retail stores that have happy holiday signs instead of Merry Christmas signs. Uh, she takes on folks that are arguing against, say, a children's Christmas program only having Christmas songs that aren't Little Drummer Boy, that, that take religion, take Christ out of Christmas. So whatever your uh, opinion is on that, regardless, it's, it's an interesting read. And certainly the, the Fox War on Christmas has done great ratings for that network. So this is an extension of that, and I think you would enjoy it. Sarah Palin joining me at HarperCollins on Monday. Uh, next up, Larry Clayman joins me on Newsmax TV and Newsmax Radio.